Here's a look at some outstanding mothers in the animal kingdom who are 100% leaning into motherhood. By any means necessary, the natural world can be a harsh place for new offspring, and often it's up to these brave moms alone to protect and raise their young when they enter this world. And these next videos are all about a mother's love. Our planet is full of incredible examples of how these moms teach their babies how to hunt for food and protect themselves against whatever comes their way. They're just doing what has to be done. Mama style. Here are 15 of the most amazing animal moms in the world. Snakes messing with the wrong chickens. In this intense video, you see a chicken nervously patrolling her chicks. Who wouldn't be a nervous of that? Because, as you can see, there's a serpent sneakily slithering into this chicken coop and it looks like a king cobra when it rises its head in a defensive warning. You might think that chickens might cower in the presence of a hungry venomous snake like this. Nope, we're about to show you how brave mama chickens are. In fact, no matter how determined the snake is, trying several times to get closer to the chicks, this mama hen is right there the whole time, putting herself in harm's way to save her babies. There's no denying that this mother hen fought a fierce battle with this creepy cobra, she continued pecking at it until her chicks moved safely out of the enclosure. And make no mistake, these chicken moms will even take on more than one serpent if they have to. Snakes may help control pest populations, and rodents eat plant seeds, the snakes eat the rodents, so it's helping plants find new places to grow as well. So, why don't they leave these chickens alone? There's never a shortage of rodents around, right? This snake clearly got the message and made an exit and these adorable chickens were reunited with their protective mom. Coco and her kittens. I know it seems strange to think of a gorilla mother for kittens, but that's precisely what happened. You may have heard of Coco the gorilla, who has learned many hand signs from the American Sign Language. This is the only gorilla in the entire world that can speak and tell you what it wants by using the language. It's an extraordinary accomplishment of man and nature. What's less commonly known about Coco is her love for babies, especially baby animals. According to her owner, Coco let her know she wanted some kittens of her own. Not thinking it was a good idea at first, the owner told her maybe for her birthday. Lucky for Coco, the owner was right on her word. Coco was allowed to play with a large number of kittens and she picked up and loved every one of them. It's a little nerve-wracking seeing on screen those gorilla's hands that are so big compared to the kitten. Let your nerves be settled though, because Coco was a fantastic friend to those kittens. She even got to take two home to be her lifelong companions. Coco loved, raised, fed, and cherished those kittens until the day she died. In her last days, she'd often sign the word baby and carry the kittens in her arms like baby dolls. Harp Seal's Tough Love the harp seal is a loving and compassionate mother until it's time for the pup to move. Then it's the tough love road until the pups have gotten the hang of doing seal things. After birth, the mother will groom and feed and nourish with love for 12 days. But on the 13th, you're on your own, buddy. The mother stops feeding and grooming and starts to require the pup to do those things themselves. After all, the mother knows that once the baby's white fur of the newly birthed pup no longer provides camouflage from predators, it's up to the pups for their own survival. If a polar bear or other predator decided to make the pups a snack and hadn't been caught up to speed, the mother won't be able to save them. Lucky for the mother, the pups grow quickly. What makes a seal mother so unique is that for the first 12 days, life is all about the pup. She won't eat, she won't even drink, she'll barely move. All she does is love and feed the pups. If I were a mother who had spent at least 12 days not eating or drinking and solely focusing on the pup, I'd be ready to send them packing on day 12 too. <laughs> the Giant Pacific Octopus This is by far one of the saddest motherly tales on the list, and it all begins with a pregnant octopus. For four or five months, the octopus hunts and moves about the waters as it would normally. One day, when the water temperature is just right, she starts launching her eggs, one at a time, into the water. Here's the best and weirdest part of it all. She will swim and continue to lay eggs for months until she has laid anywhere between 50 and 70,000 eggs. 
Could you imagine giving birth to even one, let alone tens of thousands? The babies just float around until the mother octopus swoops by and scoops them up. The babies at this point are helpless and enveloped in a teardrop pod. Then she takes her many arms and ties all her babies together, forming a giant den of squid that will protect her and the young while they grow. She sits there just beneath her den of babies and watches every waking hour of every day. The gleaming white teardrop-shaped eggs never out of her reach or her sight. After months and months pass, the octopus becomes malnourished. It can be seen in the discoloration of the skin. At this time, the mother octopus will blow, like a dandelion, her babies out of their seeds and into the open ocean to begin their new life. The mother octopus, now completely drained of energy from birth and protecting her young, will die, and her young will feed on her carcass. Meerkat Dynasties Behind these cute little faces are brutal, violent, and ruthless creatures. It's a real game of thrones in the meerkat kingdoms. For a meerkat, survival is dependent on your squad. These small mammals live in kingdoms of up to 50. They're like the neighborhood watch for one another. There are clearly more than 50 meerkats in the world, so where are the rest of them? Well, believe it or not, they're at war with each other. If you aren't part of the same kingdom of the meerkat, you aren't welcome. With this mentality, the mother has a crucial role in the babies born, even going as far as enslaving weaker female meerkats to be wet nurses for their own young. If they refuse, the weaker female is cast out or killed in a fight with the alpha. A dominant female and male reign supreme of each kingdom. These two alphas delegate to other members of the kingdom what's to be done and claim all subordinates' reproductive rights. This mentality and way of living are referred to as a gang or mob-like mentality by scientists. Mess with one, you get the pack. If power-level females do manage to birth their own litter, retaliation is swift and brutal. I mean, we're talking biblical infanticide. Alpha females are brutal and relentless in their cleansing. Good news though, most of the time, the lower females allocate their children to the group, so cause for war is usually avoided. It does happen every so often, however. <laughs> Elephant mothers. Elephants are excellent in almost every way. Maybe it's because they have awesome moms. Elephant mamas may look dangerous, but they have some of the animal kingdom's gentlest hearts. They nurse their young the most prolonged time compared to any other animal, and when they grow, they are never too far from their babies. It turns out elephants are more like humans than we first suspected. If one of their young moves to another part of the savanna, the mother follows. You'll always be mama's little baby, in her eyes. That is only the start about what makes elephant mom so cool. They're tough, they're pregnant for nearly two years. When that baby is finally ready, mom births a 200 pound baby. Growing up, elephant moms teach their young how to forage, survive, fight, and even stranger danger. <laughs> you heard that right. Even in the animal kingdom, they teach their young to avoid straying too far from your post. Last but certainly not least, elephant moms are single. That is to say, the father figures aren't involved in the raising. That all falls on mom. None of those elephants could be who they are as adults if it weren't for those amazing moms raising them from the get-go. <laughs> Excellent work, mom. The Cayman, warm and cuddly mothers? When you think of gators, you might not think warm and cuddly. Or maybe you do, I'm not judging. I think it's safe to say the majority finds alligators to be anything but warm and cuddly. Deal? Turns out, you don't need to be fluffy to be warm and cuddly. The gator mama is a great example. First comes the nesting. Females begin building nests on the dry ground out of vegetation like sticks, grass, and reeds. Once the nest is looking gorgeous, they drop off the eggs, nearly 50 of them at a time, then cover them up with more sticks and nest materials. Though mama will still need to enter the water to eat, she never ventures too far from the nest, especially at night. Raccoons are alligator mom's worst nightmares. One snap from a hidden mama gator, on the other hand, is just as nightmarish for the raccoon. When the eggs are ready, something amazing happens. The babies in the eggs start vocalizing while still in the eggs. This serves two purposes. One, it synchronizes the hatchling with their siblings, and two, attracts the mothers back to the nest. These eggshells are tough, too tough for the babies alone to crack them. 
Once mom returns, she uses her vice-like jaws and bites each of them open, revealing her babies. She then, as gentle as you might ever see an alligator be, lifts them out and drops them into the safety of water, where they'll wait patiently for their mother to get through the entire family. As they swim through the water, the babies are never too far off from their mother's heel, who will fight any predator with more ferocity than ever before. Wolf Spider All female spiders are great mothers. Some take it even a little too far. The wolf spider is a fierce and protective mother. She's different from most other spiders when it comes to mothering methods. Wolf spiders are free rangers and take their egg sacs with them where they go, as opposed to leaving a sack somewhere safe like most other spiders. Ever see those spiders running across your floor with a white ball on its back? Those are mama spiders. More famously, you may have seen a mom spider getting stomped, only to reveal that hundreds of babies come spilling out onto the floor like some spider horror film. For wolf spiders, they take parenting to the next level by carrying their newly hatched youngs on their backs, like the opossum as mentioned earlier, except with eight legs. Yeah, that's a big old no for me. Wolf spiders are big too, or at least they can be big. I suggest if you ever find one of these monsters running around your house with a white sack on its back, you use a glass and not smash it beneath your shoe. You may just relieve the wrath of the children and have to deal with hundreds instead of just one. But I digress. If you like spiders, by all means, throw yourself a party. The Orangutan Most mothers in the primate family are highly intelligent and highly skilled mothers. Watching a mother orangutan swing through the trees with her baby on her back with such ease is a joy to watch. Not to mention, wish you could do. Cool moves and sweet grooves aren't the only things making mama orangutan an amazing mom. Because they are so intelligent, they often build a lasting and loving connection with their offspring, one that transcends one's lifetime. When the mother dies, the children know and pace about the enclosures at zoos. It's a known thing. Whereas the mother and baby lives are now forever intertwined, the father usually chooses a secluded lifestyle, but have been observed to recognize their own offspring. Junior orangutans typically live alongside for up to eight years, and in most cases, it far exceeds that time frame. Once the boy becomes a man, he will usually prefer the solitary lifestyle in a tree of his own. When an orangutan is set free from the mother's chain, they are indeed on their own. There's no turning back, it's why moms and babies are with each other for so long. They must absorb all the information he needs to survive or suffer when the chain is finally cut. Polar Bears Polar bear moms have an impressive title, the Queens of the Arctic. Even that prestigious title doesn't do them justice. Mother polar bears are ensuring the next generation of polar bears grow strong, smart, and better than ever. Without the mother polar bears raising their cubs, they would be nearly extinct. They endure much to ensure the longevity of their species is long. Wintertime is a prime time hunting season for polar bears, with seals and walruses looking like a buffet on those ice sheets. During this season, a pregnant polar bear is disastrous, were it not for the tenacity of her mother polar bear. After birth, the winter will be nearly over, making hunting much more difficult for the mama bear. With the warmer waters, all of the polar bear's main food is enjoying the cooling waters and fun in the sun. For this season, a bear has usually stored enough food to get through it. For the mother bear and her cub, a long, tough road lies before them, one of hunger and exhaustion. The mother will hunt night and day to get food for her young and her babe. Nothing will stand in her way. Think you've seen an angry bear? Get in the middle of a starving polar bear mother and her cub. Believe it or not, they more often than not survive this period. This teaches every polar bear how to survive in the harsher years. That means every polar bear is like a Spartan. They must endure a trial by fire before entering the ranks of the elite hunters. Warrior mom at her highest. Katjinga, the Rhodesian Ridgeback. When a living creature is part of a dog's pack, it doesn't matter what kind of creature it is, it's part of the pack. Could be a human, could be another dog, a cat, a kitten, or even a pig. With Cat Jenga, that's precisely what she did. Farm dogs are often very protective of their farmland and animals that are within its domain. There is a reason they're farm dogs. On the other hand, mothering a baby pig is a rare occurrence, 
not to mention adorable surrogate mom Kajinga, an eight-year-old Rhodesian Ridgeback, took on motherly responsibility for the adopted piglet. The farmer found the baby pig roaming and near death. He threw the pig in his truck and introduced it to Kat Jenga, who immediately accepted it as one of her own. It was love at first sight, says the owner. Kat Jenga was just as protective of the piglet as her own pups, and the piglet loved her pack for the rest of its life. Whenever Kat Jenga would stroll past the pen, he would run around the pen in elation and roll around in the mud. Kat Jenga would just watch and pant. Sometimes I feel like there's much we can learn from dogs. Self-sacrificing Cecilians There's little more you can do for your loved ones than self-sacrifice. These Cecilians do just that. I mean, it's pretty brutal, to be honest. Once the babies have been born, they strip the flesh from their mother's body like a pack of ravenous predators until they've had their fill. Seems strange, right? Well, it's not as bad as I made it sound. The mothers develop more skin that flakes off for them to eat. Though as children can often do, they can go too far, catching the wrath from an annoyed mother's snap. These guys are amphibians and closely related to frogs and salamanders. I know, I know, they look more like snakes than amphibians. <coughs> Adeli penguins, the best parents. Penguins are awesome and awesome parents. They're one of the few animals in the animal kingdom where both males and females play a vital role in the development of their young. Adeli penguins can be found on the continent of Antarctica. In springtime, thousands of them congregate. It's truly a spectacle to see in person. While this congregation of penguins is active, mating season is at an all-time high. By the time the season is over, all pregnant penguins have eggs in December. Well, it's cold in Antarctica, too cold for eggs to stay warm on their own. While the mothers stay behind and protect the eggs from danger and keep them warm, Father Penguin is swimming through the seas in search of food. The family stays together for as long as need be. The mother won't move a muscle except to ward off any predators. When the father is not away, he joins in on protecting and keeping the egg warm. By March, the Delhi chicks are about nine weeks old. This means that their old baby feathers have molted away and their new shiny waterproof ones have grown in and they are ready to take. Clownfish, the best mother at all costs. Yes, clownfish, the fish that is now associated with Disney and Finding Nemo, is a mother who will do whatever it takes to ensure the survival and thriving of their young. Now here's the best part. Remember at the beginning of the Finding Nemo movie, where Nemo's mom is killed by the barracuda? If you haven't, the mother dies in the first scene and the father takes on the role. In real life, if the female clownfish in the family dies, leaving the male widower, the male clownfish would change its sex to female to ensure the babies had a mother figure. How amazing is that? <coughs> Cheetah Cheetah moms get a bad rap for being bad moms. Their cubs rarely make it to the age of two. Now I know that may seem insane, but considering all the predators in the wild, it's a miracle even that many get to be that age. Cheetah moms let their cubs climb all over them as if they were a playground. Cubs tug on ears, pull on tails, jump on backs. Say what you want, being a cheetah mother seems like a rough go. More power to you, cheetah moms. A cheetah teaches their young through the school of hard knocks. That's no joke. If the cheetah is to survive, the cheetah must learn. And that mother pushes her cubs hard, often at times too hard. It's probably one of the reasons their young don't live very long one factor anyway. Make it through training though and the cubs, even at a young age, are among the most elusive and effective hunters of cats on the planet. The world is run by moms. If moms don't teach and rear, we'd all still be wild animals. There are many lessons we can learn from nature. Perhaps the power and respect we show our mothers should be much greater. If you enjoyed the video, Smash that like button and subscribe if you want to get all our lit content delivered right to your inbox.